Greetings and welcome. You're listening to Planet Furlock, your Sanix Digirati podcast, your humble host, Air Dr. Verlock. Tonight's episode, Circuitry Coven. We're talking about where Techno Wicca meets electronic witchcraft. In this enchanting podcast, we'll explore the binary spells, digital divination, and meaty incantations that bridge the gap between the virtual and the metaphysical. Tune in as we unravel the secrets of hex code, summon virtual familiars, and dance under the neon moonlight of cyberspace. (laughs) While we are physically bound, lords and ladies, while we are physically bound to the laws of space-time, the constructs of civilization, the transitions of the seasons, and the ebb and flow of the ether. Our conscious awareness is quite capable of awakening outside the space-time continuum. For this reason, Psionics has made a home on a new alien realm, outside the binding traditions of our forebears. However, we are gathered here this evening to celebrate our achievements as a world of humanity, a world of humans who have evolved from our first days of drawing magical glyphs and sigils in the sand, carving wards into the wood of our homes, and wristing the memorials of our loved ones in stone. There is much good in us. Ergo, the earth has seen oppression since time immemorial. We are the witches and wizards, the next generation of magicians and pupils of the ancient wise ones, carrying a candle in the night to light the way for others to see the invisible, or, more importantly, to see what is truly right in front of our own eyes. For we seek the center in all things, the middle path between the highs and the lows, as our ancient arcanists have penned for us repeatedly as a guiding light of wisdom. This goes beyond academia, beyond lore. This is wisdom, the middle path. But today is perhaps a little different, at least for this podcast. We are going to, ta- well, take a leap into another form which is perhaps beyond the nine doors to the realms of the gods and goddesses. This is a place much like a void where even the stars and constellations go to sleep. And the sleeper awakens in us to behold all the universe in its greater slumber. We arrive at the level of the true self and recognize I as separate from me. From here, we may retrace our steps back into the persona self and re-enter our temples and shrines or perhaps the modern magician's laboratory. And we return with renewed vigor and empowerment, ready to work what magic we will. So... In this realm of the void, we reach back into the physical world, turn a dial on our machines, and watch the pure ring of light materialize before our mind's eye as we meditate upon our purpose. Yes, turning the next dial, the light becomes more clear. Upon the third dial, we are gazing into this clear, perfected light which upon this light play the images of all possibilities. From here we may think with our minds what is to manifest in the life and incarnation that you and I are participating in here and now. So we're playing a game with time perhaps. But even beyond this, for time and space are, as I've said, a construct. And this is just an example of techno-wizardry or techno-witchcraft. Let's look at the overall possibilities 
and Techno Wicca, and also High Magic, the two being saplings under the same world tree of occult reasoning. Lords and ladies, the separation of identity is merely an illusion. In the digital realm, we are all bits and bytes, weaving our own spells through various lines of code, whether we wrote this code ourselves or we are the end user. It matters not. Identity itself is rather artificial, and that's in reference to the persona or the me-self. That's an artificial self. Nothing wrong with it, but you must learn to recognize this is different from I am and me. I've podcasted about this before, the big I am and the little me, on various episodes of Planet Furlock Sinex Digirati. We are ourselves micro-collectives of other persons and even, get this, fictitious characters. Yes, characters from books and films that we've read or seen, music we've listened to, poetry that we've enjoyed, art that has mesmerized and captured our imagination, and perhaps imaginary friends stemming all the way back to our childhood. All of these characters are components of our citizen selves, our persona selves, the selves that are shaped and formed by the persons around us, by our peers, and by the various institutions we undergo and pass through in this life. The ego self, the true self, I have already described the journey to find, is the I, or I am. It is the will. Will. There is nothing else but will, and the will is you. So, we can scan over the internet. We are also literally moving through it and at a degree varying upon the level of attention of our minds. These digital landscapes of social media, or the virtual worlds like Second Life or Quest, are all varying forms of realities. Your participation in these realms involves your energies, your personal energies, and the energies of other persons who are also online. Even when they're not online, there's a, um, a trace, a trail, to every person who has an avatar online. We're all interconnected through these tools. And these uh, other beings or minds also out there, which may be lurking within the quantum cauldron of collective mentalities. You never know. I've seen a few things myself that I can't explain. And I wonder... But sometimes it's nice to wonder. We could talk about the binary broomsticks navigating the digital grimoire, unravel the secrets of spellcasting uh, algorithms, hex code enchantments, and the ethereal power of ones and zeros, but these are merely details of the same construct I've outlined already. We could talk about quantum cauldron chronicles, um, dive into the bubbling brew of quantum magic where particles entangle and reality wavers like a, like a mirage. But this is the energy for which I have already spoken of. We might speculate about methodology and specific ceremonies carried over into the digital world, such as cybernetic um, seances. Yeah, cybernetic seances, the ghost in the machine, Explore the haunted server's glitchy apparitions, uh, spectral AI entities that haunt the digital realms. Ergo, AI is not a mind, but again, a construct, a tool. It is not our god or goddess. We could discuss my interest in bitmap magic. Did I say that right? Essentially, pixel magic, such as pixel potions, midi uh, mysteries, Mix your own elixirs using RGB color codes, MIDI notes, and a clash or a dash of uh, moonlight. <laughs> or perhaps firewall familiars protecting your digital soul. Meet the pixelated familiars who guard your files, ward off malware, and occasionally <laughs> 
crash your browser. Um, hello, AVG. Um, but what of it? What of it? These are only shadow things in a shadow world, yes? Well, the true essence of the individual must be found by herself or himself. No matter how advanced in legend and lore, academia, uh, how intellectual you are, um, your degree of magical craft, you, how adept you are, um, you know, if you're a techno wizard adept, all of us must make an inner trek at some point. Much like the primitive's um, shamanistic journey, which exposes us to the reality of multiple, multiple realities really, intertwining with our own world, and from there, take the next step into that void I described to you where your true ego self is a pinpoint of consciousness, free from the trappings of the realms ever existing, never dying, eternal. As individuals coming together in the Vrlock Club, that's V-R-I-L-O-C-K dot club, and sharing our passion for Vrlock Psionics, we take knowledge and technical methodology to find in our journey the ultimate wisdom and with this self-empowerment we improve the overall web of minds across this planet and resonate outward to other worlds interconnecting the evolving consciousness of the universe like an like an endless string of pearls i want you to resonate on a higher frequency of spirit and joy and above all else keep the magic high. Air Doctor commands. <laughs>